Right, let's see the reception on the last video. Wow! How the actual fuck did you manage to do that? Yeah, I know, right? How did the video get over 100 views in a week? It's the best performing video on my fucking channel! That is actually really fucking sad. Yeah, it is. Shadria, end this retarded skit and just cut to the Game Theory parody intro. Sure, why not? What is up, Drama Lad Nation? Let's get right into my nudes! Or maybe not. That'd get me into the demonetized. Oh, and some bullshit about indecent exposure. That doesn't matter. So, for all one people watching, the Sonic series used to be one of the most influential series of all time. Being able to stand up against the old beast plumber by introducing shit like a fucking story with cutscenes in between the levels. The only people watching this are Sonic fans. We don't need a history lesson to stretch out the watch time. The last video was fucking half an hour long. Fair enough. So before we get into this, let me just set some ground rules so the comments aren't a garbage fire. Number one, no extended media. This includes comics, TV shows, crossover, or boom. They have their own law, many of which abide by the Sonic Bible, the Catholic way of writing the blue blur. Number two, no racing games without a plot. Okay, only rivals and riders are allowed in because they have their own sort of story. Meanwhile, games like All Stars Racing Transformed, or more accurately in this case Sonic Drift, don't have an in-game story. There's probably some bullshit on the manuals about a backstory, but like, the manuals vary from country to country anyway, so it's not really any point in doing that. So yeah, no racing games. Number three. No fucking handheld ports. Sorry Triple Trouble and the definitive version of Colours. Consoles are where the series began and it's where it continues and is the main way people catch up with the series aside from modding the fuck out of Generations and Mania. With that, let's begin. There was once a time when Sega cared about Sonic's plot to the point of writing a fucking Bible to ensure he was given the godlike respect he deserves. But nowadays, Classic gets retconned in pretty much every new fucking release now, and somehow has even less character than when he was a 90s cool kid stereotype. So we begin in Mobius when suddenly, Green Hill starts looking more like Sand Hill! No. Eggman just turns everyone into cyborgs and Sonic starts being a killjoy that he is and destroys the animal suits. Or he frees them from slowly starving to death as their force of power machine designed to kill. Way to be a killjoy. <laughs> so we're unsure if Sonic 1 is the first encounter or if it's the one of many, but this is the point where the cast is at its smallest. So Sonic smashes Eggman's insta-kill bullshit machine and that's the end of that. Between this and Sonic 2, Sonic flies onto Tails' island using a plane. Like why the fuck does Sonic need a plane? To chase the guy with a hovercraft and currently building a space base. Thanks. So Tails goes to sneak up on Sonic and send him the way of those fucking ducks when he notices just how cool Sonic is. So he decides to stalk him to admire his c 
coolness. He's definitely not checking out his ass. He's eight. I'm twenty. And he's fifteen. Anyway, while doing so, tells his tinkering kink makes him lose control and starts upgrading or repairing the tornado as Sonic fucks off for no reason. As Sonic returns, he catches Tails pissing about with his plane, and seeing how good of a job he's done, he offers Tails to be his pilot, so he can try out that sick spin dash off the wings technique he always wanted to try, because even though he's only 8, he does have an IQ of 300, so what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> anyway, Tails being so blown away by Sonic's coolness agrees. Then some bullshit about Eggman launching the Death Egg or whatever. Later, Sonic does a leap of faith and gets caught by Tails as the Death Egg crashes into Angel Island, where his robots start terraforming, leading an Egg Robo to bomb Knuckles for some reason, leading him into finding Eggman, who presumably apologises for his robots alleged disobedience, and then starts to warn him about a hedgehog who has the seven servers and wants the controller to unify the chaos so he can attain ultimate power. Knuckles, never seeing an evil scientist before, believes him, allowing him to set up robotic defences and enacts one of the most badass introductions of all time, at least for the time. Uppercut Super Sonic so hard, he drops the emeralds! So yeah, Sonic 3 happens, and with that, stage transitions and set pieces leading into Angel Island being restored, and the Death Egg just... somewhere. So here comes CD. Could have happened before meeting Tails, could have happened after Sonic 3, but putting it after Sonic 3 for later uses. Sonic goes off to watch Little Planet once again get gravitationally locked within the atmosphere, only to eventually get ripped apart by tidal forces. He was hoping this time he'd see it crumble. But as Sonic was watching the island appear above a giant lake, like seriously, it's the size of an ocean if a planet could fit within it. But suddenly, Eggman scorpions the fuck out of the planet and start to convert it using TIME TRAVEL! Also Amy is there. So Sonic chases after Eggman and defeats Metal only for Eggman to use the Infinity Stones to undo all of Sonic's progress leading to the bad ending. Or Sonic gets all the time stones or destroys all the time capsules to either prevent Eggman from time travelling or make Eggman's time travelling not fast forward to the production of robots or some shit. So these are the classic games. Or are they? Yes. What about Sonic 4? It's not canon. Oh please, Sonic has no fucking canon. Calling it non-canon to the Sonic series is like saying nothing doesn't contain cats. What? So, the Death Egg is still in commission. Same sort of gameplay, not at all. Direct sequel, and is a good starting point for Sonic having green eyes. What about Sonic Pocket Edition? It's a handheld port of Sonic 2. Isn't Sonic 4 a mobile game which is portable? I said ports, not games. So, back to the actual canon parts. What about Sonic 3D Blast? Sonic's just rescuing Flickies. But it has Tails and Knuckles in. Fine, between 3 and CD for simplicity. The Sonic Adventure series summarised. So, everyone is aged up by 2 years. Tails is now 10, Amy 13, Eggman unknown, Sonic is still 15, and everyone has gone through eye puberty. Man, I remember eye puberty. I was blind for a week. Anyway, Sonic chases Eggman, Gamma lives a brief but beautiful life, and Amy vows to become an independent woman. Direct sequel, Tails becomes an independent woman, Amy gets held at gunpoint, and Robotnik adopted his nickname because Eggman Land is a more inviting theme park name. Because a monument to a dictator 
who took over the world via threats of mutual destruction needs to be less threatening. Well, yeah, the theme park is for kids. Anyway, so Sonic Heroes. Three teams do their own thing while Shadow's corpse is trapped inside of a silo in front of a computer, guarded by a god robot, hidden deep inside of a seaside resort. Sure, Shadow the Hedgehog, the game. Show us lore about Shadow the Hedgehog, the character. And in the true ending, we find out that the Shadow being analysed by a computer and guarded by a killer death robot was different from the shadows in the military array inside of a battleship. Who knew? Like seriously. It's like he was the core of the cloning project because he didn't die due to being in super form or something. And somehow, people can figure out this clear as day plot twist which falls apart the moment you put any thought as to why Eggman would set any of this up to the point of hiding a supposedly heavily guarded base in some generic grassy seaside area which only contained a singular shadow. Nah, there couldn't possibly be anything special about this shadow as opposed to the entire fucking battleship filled with them. Ugh! Anyway, so Shadow leaves the cast to be eaten alive by alien larvae Sonic 06 happened, then it didn't happen. Instead, we get the best intro sequence in Sonic history, where Sonic finally embraces the furry fandom. Then he started telling dad jokes. Then time breaks, and it's unsure if Sonic remembers meeting his future self or not. I'm assuming not, because he's not bitter about being lied to. Unless Boom Sonic's content was inspired by Modern's lies, so he fucked off onto an unnamed island to avoid it all. Who fucking knows? So with that sorted, let's analyse plot threads to see where we can build off of. Number 1. Bad Future Boss Fight. So in Generations, Metal's fight is inside of the WE KNOW YOU JUST PARAPHRASED IT! Jeez. But yeah, the ending of CD was bad. Number 2, Crisis City slash Silver Fight. Does it make sense because this is the future, but maybe this is travelling through Sonic's past because he got slapped by the time eater, or it's an anniversary game, I don't know. But anyway, in 06, all of the events have already happened. Mephilis sends Silver to kill Sonic, Shadow stops Silver, they time travel back in time, they steal Solaris, Rouge releases Mephilis, Mephilis sends Shadow into the future, Omega saves Shadow from Mephilis, Shadow encounters Sonic and Silver. Really, it's quite a good story and concept, it just had botch execution. Which is a damn shame, could've been one of the best games if they had put the time into it. Get to the point. So because of this, we know it's the version of reality doomed to lava monster destroying the planet until our saviour Silver comes and rebuilds in Blaze's name. Only for Dark Gaia to attack and wipe out all life on Earth as part of the fucked cycle of death and rebirth. Happy ending I guess. But because of all this, we know that Silver doesn't come back in time to stop the world from being destroyed. He's only in forces without explanation, but I'm jumping the gun. Main series wrap up. So Little Planet was left to rot away as Sonic got pissed off and gave up, allowing Eggman to run away its resources and converted the population into badniks. Except for the Zeti because they control machines or whatever. So he stole SpongeBob's magic conch to control them. Later, Sonic Run is launched, and it's running to destroy robot factories and crap. It got discontinued because it used servers to store levels instead of seeds, which is by far the crappiest design decision, noting the fact most of the series' games are only played nowadays via preservation. Like, just store the fucking story tidbits in the servers and cut them out when the servers go down. I thought we weren't talking about mobile games since they're handheld. 
We aren't talking about ports, fucking listen! Plus it's any excuse to bitch about digital games having the crappy lifespan. Then Sonic Forces comes along and introduces a classic Sonic from another dimension that somehow has the same lore as Sonic 3 and Knuckles and includes characters like Mighty and Ray, which I haven't... Oh! CD Good Future? CD Good Future! What about the Revonted Pulses though? I don't know, they went missing and their families went to the police? Fair point. Spin-off canon. This is where it gets fun, boys! So we begin our branch with Knuckles Chaotix and Sega Sonic. Doesn't matter which order, because two things are important. Eggman's affinity for capturing the Sonic cast, and the introduction of Mighty and Ray. So, Eggman fails to get the six Chaos Emeralds, the seven Emeralds, the Master Emerald, the Time Stones, and now the Chaos Rings. So he gets so fed up, he builds an island full of death traps, because surely one will work. But now Sonic escapes them all, so he blows up the entire fucking complex. So Knuckles Chaotix is before this? Why yes! The game literally starts with freeing SPO and introduces Mighty Individual from Ray, insinuating they haven't met. And then there is the Advanced series, which has ties to Sonic Battle via Jamel, which contains a character Gamma, a character whose life is entirely documented within Sonic Adventure, meaning they cannot be on the same timeline. So combining the affinity for kidnapping with the incompatibility of the timelines, we lead into the next spin-off series, Rush. So Blaze the Cat, doesn't she recognise his name in 06? He saved the world multiple times. She probably seen some books about him and remembered the name. Unlikely because books burn inside of lava hot places. LEGENDS THEN! Anyway, Blaze comes from another dimension. Is it the, a dimension she went to after sealing Iblis inside of her? And she took up the job of protecting the Soul Emeralds? Or is it a new Blaze born into such a position? Who the fuck knows? This is time travel and dimension hopping. Why the fuck did Sonic become Doctor Who? Anyway, Eggman and Nega team up to destroy reality. Get stop, yatta yatta. Sonic Chronicles has a male robots which links to Sonic Battle and ends with Eggman taking over the world. So that ends the timeline until Dark Guy awakens to destroy us all. Where's Mania? I don't know, maybe after Sega Sonic and before the eye puberty! Sonic 06 So Silver travels back in time to stop Nega from destroying the world in the Rivals series until Nega gets sealed inside of the Ifrit's dimension. Anticlimactic? You do know I'm Shadow, right? Let's just get this done. So we know this can't be Rush, because Nega originates from Eggman's dimension this time, and this can't be 06, because Silver is still time travelling to stop the world from going to shit. No Colors DS doesn't count, because it doesn't appear on console. Lazy. You know what's lazy? What if the Ifrit is actually Iblis, but described by a different dimension who could only see the destruction and knew nothing about the world's past, and then Nega knowing how to open up the dimensional portals travels to Blaze's dimension, once getting sealed of his own, so he doesn't burn in lava. Then, because Eggman doesn't recognise his grandson he never had, thus not knowing he's a psychopath, teams up, leading into two close attempts at destroying the world, both ending with Sonne stopping Nega from revolting on Eggman by destroying their robot before their final smash activates. 
That's not lazy. That's being a conspiracy theorist. Simpsons predicted 9-11. Get on with the video. So, Sonic Riders. One thing people question is how Eggman can be trusted enough to hold competitions. Or why Sonic is so distrusting of Eggman if he's able to reach such positions of power and just tries to find lost treasures. Well, after SA2, metal is the threat. Then an alien invasion, then our 6 never happens, then Nega is the threat, and with Nega gone, he can blame everything on him and clear his name, because in Rivals 2, he actually disguises as Eggman in order to not get found out by Sonic or whatever the fuck. Like, seriously, Sonic never finds out that Nega was the one doing the bad shit inside of Rivals 2. He's, he literally just assumes that it's Eggman getting trapped in the dimension, which is pretty fucked up if you think about it. Anyway, so he clears his name with no recent misdeeds, and yet Sonic can still be suspicious because this guy still tried to level the fucking moon. Oh, it's just bad writing. Anyway, the Riders series devolves and everyone lives happily ever after in a futuristic series until Dark Guy wakes up and destroys everything. Man, Unleashed has so many dark implications for the Sonic world. But wait, how does the Rivals fit before Riders? Well, first, it's the new future after Sonic 06 because stated before Solaris is no longer a threat. Secondly, the other timelines are pretty finely defined as to not have futuristic utopias in the end, so I might as well put the games in the only remaining timeline. What about generations ending having extra characters appear? I'm not gonna add a new timeline for a singular cutscene especially since the game was about freeing his friends from his timeline anyway. I don't know, it has more grounding than some professional YouTube theorists theories. Don't, just don't put those three words together. Only two can work together at most. And you just pissed off another community. Hey, might as well get those extra controversy views. So now we have the three branches, let's fix up some loose connections. The Storybook Games. These are directly referenced within Sonic Generations. Thing about them is they're either getting sucked into somewhere for a day, or just a dream from Sonic passing out reading books so they could literally go anywhere. So let's look at where they couldn't happen. 1. Green Eyes, so after classic games. 2. Referencing gens, so before gens. 3. Has a homing attack without a shield, so after Sonic 3D. 4. Sonic doesn't tell dad jokes and has a more prominent caring side, so he acts more like Unleashed Sonic. 5. Can slow down, chaos control, and speed up, boost, both abilities, Sonic has at the point of Unleash, so I'll just dump it between Unleash and Colours, why not? Why Colours? No Wisps. Okay then, what about Sonic Fighters? That has 8 Emeralds. Master Emerald is the 8th. Sonic 1 had 6. The 7th was lost, hence no Super Sonic. Point. Anyway, I'll put it before Mania, but after Chaotix, because Fang Bean and Bark the Polar Bear appear in a boss fight and this is before the Kidnap Galore starting at Sega Sonic. Sonic Shuffle? Occurs in the Dream World, hell it's even called Imaginary World, could be put pretty much any day within its era like the storybook games were. Sonic Labyrinth? I don't know. Maybe before Sega Sonic as a first attempt to kill him via stealing his shoes? 
Sonic is still fast in soap shoes though. It's classic Sonic. Back when the series was Catholic. Yeah, stop with the Bible joke. It's really fucking old. You're really old. You're no longer a child. How fucking dare you! Fuck off and get promoted so you can move out. Trat. So yeah, that's my headcanon. What about the Tails games? I said at the beginning about Tails bombing birds. So yeah, please comment your own version of the overarching story to boost this video algorithmically if YouTube even uses comments for more than demonetization. Well done. You included the obligatory edgy YouTuber joke. I don't know, I could use a Shadow the Hedgehog disc to cut my wrists while playing Get Edgy on full blast. If you ever do that, I fucking swear. So I guess this is the video that took me an entire year to get around to making. Man, I must have really wanted to waste hundreds of pounds on Sony Vegas and a PC that'll get destroyed by dust. Your depressing humour isn't funny. You aren't funny. You've done this a couple seconds ago. Ah oh, cool, meta humour. Ah oh, cool, self-awareness. Why did I write this? No idea. Seriously though, if I've missed anything like some obscure Sonic Arcade game then tell me. I would love to update this when the next Sonic game comes out so I can ride that hype train. So yeah, hope you enjoyed and have a good rest of your day and let's hope that this video doesn't cause another fucking controversy. Even though the last one wasn't really much of a controversy, more just me getting, well, wasn't much drama, it was more just me getting my arse handed to me because, you know, if there was drama, Doodle Tones would have got some shit and yeah, she got no shit, <laughs> which... Fair enough really, she done nothing wrong, it was just me making the shit video and me getting like absolutely criticised for it, though. The YouTube comments!